Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We have now completed static longitudinal static stability part uh, for both wing alone and wing and tail combination. We have solved few example problems, how to figure out the neutral point for a given configuration. And then we also studied about static margin, which is uh, positive for a sta in order to achieve uh, a statically stable flight. And then we have also demonstrated the uh, wing and tail combination right, uh, in stable and unstable mode. So, flight of wing and tail combination. Now, let us proceed. So, we till now we are talking about an equilibrium condition, right. So, what is an equilibrium condition? So, we have the flight condition in which or the state about which the resultant forces and moments are 0. So, for a longitudinal case, uh, what will be an equilibrium condition for longitudinal flight? So, when lift is equals to weight and thrust is equals to drag and the pitching moment is equals to 0, which means half rho v square is C m times C bar has to be 0. This implies the pitching moment coefficient has to be 0 for equilibrium condition. So, we call when the aircraft satisfies these three equations, then what we call is the aircraft uh, or the UAV is said to be in trim condition, right. That means, what exactly trim means? We are maintaining a constant angle of attack, is not it? So, the aircraft is flying at a constant angle of attack, where there is no resultant pitching moment acting and then the lift is balanced by weight of the like lift generated by the UAV is, is balancing the weight of the configuration, exactly balancing the weight of the configuration and then thrust generated by the engine is satisfying the drag that is required by the system, ok. So, Okay, as far as a particular trim is concerned, that is fine. That means, we are flying at a given angle of attack, right. So, what if I want to change that angle of attack, okay. So, what I need to do when I have to fly at different angle of attack. So, let us closely look at this equation, lift is equals to weight, which is equals to half rho v square s times C l is equals to W, right. So, when you are talking about a level flight, this particular parameter is constant at that particular altitude and the for a given UAV, say these parameters are constant, more or less constant, ok. Weight, we consider there is no uh, change in the weight of the UAV due to fuel consumption. So, when I have to fly at a particular velocity, I need to develop a particular CL from the wings, right? How I develop that CL? CL as a linear function, we assumed a linear function of angle of attack, right, CL variation with angle of attack. So, in order to change the CL, I need to change the angle of attack, because CL naught is constant, you cannot vary, right, and CL alpha you cannot vary, it depends upon the profile of the aerofoil. Once you fixed it, then this is fixed. So, the only variable that I have in my hand is alpha, right. So, if I have to change the velocity, I need to change this angle of attack of flight. Right. For example, say this is my reference axis or fuselage difference line, ok. FRL coinciding with my body axis, right. Say so, when there is forward velocity V infinity and say it is a level flight, that means this V infinity is horizontal, right. So, this particular angle with respect to this V infinity is angle of attack alpha and I have lift perpendicular to V infinity and weight acting. So, this axis is perpendicular to fuselage reference line or yeah and weight is perpendicular to 
uh, acting perpendicular to the local horizon. So, W is the weight. So, now when lift is balanced by the weight, you are flying at a particular velocity, right. So, if I have to increase the velocity, let us say, if I, if I want to fly faster, then I need to decrease the CL value to generate this weight or to, to generate a force that can balance this weight. That means what I need to do, I need to change this angle of attack. I need to decrease this angle of attack. How can I decrease it? Or say if I have to decrease the velocity, I want to fly slower, then what I need to do is, I need to increase this CL value so that this equation is balanced, right, still producing. So the force is still equal, produced from this lift, right, or, or the wings is still equivalent to the weight of the aircraft of the UAV. Now, when I have to increase this, I need to change this angle of attack again. Say I have to increase the angle of attack in this case. That means I need to hold the aircraft at a particular orientation. See, when I say it is flying at a particular angle of attack, which means that the aircraft is oriented with respect to the flow at a, yeah, at a, at a at particular orientation, right? So, now when I have to increase the angle of attack, that means I need to change the orientation of the aircraft and I have to hold that orientation, right? So, how can I do that? By means of a longitudinal control surface, right? So, we have a control surface which is located on the horizontal tail, right? Let us say there is a horizontal tail here. By deflecting a small surface which is attached to this horizontal tail, I will be able to either produce force upwards or downwards, right? So, with the help of this force that is produced aft the CG, right, aft CG. So, say this is my CG. So, this force multiplied this by this momenta will produce the corresponding moment that helps me to change this angle of attack, right. So, that means I need to, for every, each and every angle of attack, I need to produce different force at the tail, right. So, let us see what is that. So, what we are going to talk about is longitudinal control. Okay. So, how we achieve longitudinal control? With the help of elevator. So, let us get back to this equations again. So, when I have to increase the velocity, what does it mean? I need to produce the thrust which, is, which should be greater than the drag at that particular velocity, is not it or not? So, say the engine is producing thrust T which is equals to drag that is nothing but half rho v square S yes, C D. So, this is equals to half rho v square S yes, C D, right. So, initially say I am flying at 30 meters per second. Now, I want to change it to 40 meters per second. So, the initial engine setting or the throttle setting of my engine is producing only the force that is required to fly this at 30 meters per second, right. Now, suddenly the force has force from the engine has increased so that the engine output is higher compared to what it was initially, okay. So, now with the higher throttle setting will be definitely more than the initial thrust. So, I have an excess force that will accelerate my aircraft to a new velocity. So, if I do not change my CL, if I fly still fly at a higher velocity, right. So, then I am producing additional force even in the perpendicular direction of flight, right, here in this direction. So, that will take the aircraft away from this level flight condition. It, the aircraft will not remain in the equilibrium and then we can we cannot claim that the aircraft is in trim, right. So, if you have to maintain the trim condition or say level flight condition, then what we need to do is we need to decrease this CL. Okay. So, immediately what is happening with the increase in velocity, there is a change in CL, there should be a change in CL. So, that we need to incorporate. So, how we are changing this CL by changing the alpha, how this alpha is changed with the help of elevator, right. Let us see what exactly elevator is. So, elevator is a small control surface which is attached to the horizontal tail, right, for longitudinal control. So, which we have discussed earlier. So, let us say as we discussed the horizontal tail is a is, is uh, fabricated or made out of symmetric aerofoil, right. 
Okay. So, let us say this is my fuselage reference line or say or say let us say this is my chord line of this horizontal tail. Okay. Now, there is a small control surface. and it's a part of the symmetric tail right so so this particular portion which can be deflected which is a part of this tail can be deflected about a hinge hinge point right so this can be this particular portion can be deflected about this point up and down right? so this so, this portion is known as elevator, say, So, this is my uh, horizontal tail and this particular portion which is a part of this horizontal tail is called elevator, right. So, this particular and there is an axis about which this elevator can rotate, right. So, let us say if I hinge my ele elevator about this particular axis, so this axis is coming out of this board. So, this elevator can rotate up and down about this particular axis. So, this is known as hinge line of control surface. Uh, in this case, it is hinge line of elevator, elevator control surface. So, this particular portion is elevator. Okay. So, this is this is horizontal tail. And as we discussed earlier, stretch your thumb along the posterior axis of this hinge line and the corresponding curl of your fingers will give you the positive rotation of the elevator. Okay. So, now positive rotation of elevator is when the trailing edge of the elevator deflects downward. So, this so this particular angle is delta E elevator deflection. Okay. So, this is positive when you deflect the elevator up that is negative deflection. So, a positive deflection that means what is happening with the elevator deflection? So, let, as we mentioned this is my chord line right. So, let me draw it a bit clearer. So, say this is my chord line which in the earlier case is the line joining leading edge and the trailing edge right and which is nothing but the mean camber line as well is not it for a symmetric angle, uh, airfoil this is nothing but the mean camber line. Now, when there is a deflection what is happening this chord line is up to this portion is fine is same, but there is a change in the mean camber line here. So, the mean camber is changing here. So, when there is a change in mean camber line that means, there is change in or the C L alpha of this aerofoil gets affected am I correct or not. So, because of the change in the mean camber line there is an upward force the C L alpha is increase, decrease, either increasing or decreasing. Let us say initially the aircraft is trimmed or flying at a particular V infinity right V infinity prime this is horizontal tail right. So, it is so the tail is seeing certain alpha t initially. So, which can be which includes both i of t as well right. So, let us assume that as stabilizer angle of attack S t ok. So, horizontal stabilizer and the corresponding angle seen by this horizontal stabilizer. So, when there is no deflection when there is 0 deflection the total angle of attack seen by this tail 
is equals to stabilizer angle of attack, just stabilizer angle of attack, which is equivalent to alpha minus uh, epsilon plus i of t. This we discussed earlier, isn't it? But when there is a deflection with the elevator, what happens is, so, if, so in order to understand this properly, let us assume that the entire tail, horizontal tail itself is an elevator, okay? So that means if I deflect this about a hinge line, right? So a elevator deflection will change the corresponding angle of attack. Am I correct or not? Let us assume a case where, so say this is my horizontal tail and the entire horizontal tail is my elevator. So this is my horizontal tail and the entire horizontal tail is elevator. I am rotating about such an, uh, about certain hinge line, right? So now when I rotate this, what happens? So the airfoil still remains same. So this is like, I'm giving a delta here, which is actually changing the, so let us say this is my V infinity prime. So this is my initial alpha one, alpha at tail one, right? So this becomes alpha at tail two. Right? So the elevator deflection, when when the elevator is the entire horizontal tail, it is actually affecting this angle of attack. That means you are actually changing the angle of attack with the elevator deflection. So there is an effect on the angle of attack due to elevator deflection. Right? So that factor is generally given as, so the change in the angle of attack of the tail due to elevator deflection is given as tau, elevator effectiveness parameter. Okay. So even here in this case, that may not be explicitly visible, but still certain portion of the wing is being deflected that is changing the local angle of attack, right? So that the change in the elevator angle of attack at the tail due to elevator deflection is given as tau, which is flap effectiveness parameter or control surface effectiveness parameter. So this, from the historical database, you will be able to figure out this parameter tau given the control surface area upon total lifting surface area. Okay. So so if the elevator control surface is equals to the to total tail area, let us say, that means it has to become one, tau has to become one. Because change in elevator, let us say, positive deflection is rotating it downwards, right? A degree of rotating it downwards is nothing but degree increase in the angle of attack, just now we witnessed, right, in the previous figure. So the, that is when tau becomes one. So it's not exactly a linear variation, right? So up to 0.8, when this is at 0.7, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll give you that data, how the uh, elevator control surface uh, area, if it changes, no, with respect to the total, if this ratio changes, how this tau changes. So it is fixed for a given aircraft, isn't it? Because you, you have a fixed control surface area and the fixed lifting area, tail lifting area. Right? So the total lifting area is nothing but the elevator area here. Or say, I'm sorry, the total lifting area is the horizontal tail area here. And come, so, so now when there is an elevator deflection, what happens is the lifting or the, the tail angle of attack will now be a function of this parameter tau times delta. Okay. So this tau is nothing but so alpha s plus dou alpha of tail d delta e times delta e. Okay. Where alpha of s is still 1 minus dou epsilon upon dou alpha times alpha plus i of t minus epsilon naught plus tau times delta e. This is the angle of attack at the tail when there is an elevator deflection. When delta E is zero, this becomes alpha S, this particular equation. 
will be equal to alpha s. Now again coming back to this, this figure when there is delta E deflection, there is change in camber that means there is change in lift, am I correct or not? So in a layman language what we can see is it is trying to obstruct the flow here. So the flow will exert a force in the opposite direction. So, a so now a positive elevator deflection when the elevator is deflected downwards there is an upward force at the tail, right. So this upward force is at the tail, lift at the tail. So say if, if I extend this, if I say, if I, if I consider this as my fuselage reference line FRL, right, and say the CG of the aircraft is somewhere here, this is my CG. Now the lift produced by this tail, right. So what effectively happening is a change in the pressure distribution because of the change in the control surface deflection. So the change in the pressure distribution is creating a change in the force at the tail, right. So that creates a moment about CG. So when there is a positive deflection, there is an upward force that creates a negative moment. So the change in the position or say the change in the pitching moment due to change in elevator control surface is less than 0, right, negative or in other words the Cm delta E is less than 0 here, okay. So we will see what is the Cm delta E, we will discuss about that in detail here. So this Cm delta E is known as elevator control power. So elevator control power, how good you can control your aircraft using the elevator that is there Dep depends upon this parameter Cm delta E. So, it's, so higher the value greater is your control, so higher the negative greater is your control, Cm delta E is negative for a yeah, is negative here, right, Cm delta E is less than 0. Now, when there is an elevator deflection, there is a change in total lift of the aircraft, isn't it? So delta L represents the total change in the lift of the aircraft, which is due to change in the lift at the tail, right, am I correct or not? So this equals to half rho V prime square S of T, lift is, tail lift is due to? Wing, uh, tail lifting area, isn't it? S of T times CL change in lift at the tail, lift coefficient at the tail, delta CL at tail. So this equals to delta CL of the total aircraft is half rho V prime square, V infinity prime square ST divided by half rho V infinity square upon S is the wing reference area because aircraft reference area is wing reference area. And then what you have is change in lift coefficient at the tail. So this change in lift coefficient at the tail is due to elevator deflection, right? Am I correct or not? So that is nothing but DCL upon D delta E at tail, right? So delta CL of the total aircraft is equals to eta times ST upon S, eta of horizontal tail efficiency of horizontal tail times CL, change in the CL at tail due to delta E deflection, right. So we, what we observed, when there is change in delta E, there is change in camber which in turn affects the, affects the CL alpha, am I, correct? am I correct or not? When there is a change in camber, there is a change in lift curve slope, am I correct or not? So this can be modeled as DCL upon d alpha of tail times the d alpha times d delta e, right. So this is times delta e here, I am sorry, please make a correction, there should be a delta e here. So this talks about change in lift coefficient for delta e deflection, okay, fine. So this is nothing but Cl alpha of tail here. So now Cl delta E of the total aircraft is equals to DCL upon D delta E which is delta CL upon delta E is equals to or delta delta E is nothing but delta E here. So is equals to eta ST upon S times we know D alpha upon D delta E 
d alpha of tail sorry i'm sorry d alpha of tail upon d delta e is nothing but tail effectiveness parameter tau which we have discussed earlier so tau tau times cl alpha of tail okay so so if you have the details about cl alpha of tail and tau which means which can be deduced from if you have the details about geometric details about control surface area of the right area of the control surface and the area of the horizontal tail taking the ratio of that you will be able to figure out what is tau here and then yeah of course once you have the details you know what is st upon s and knowing eta you will be able to figure out what is cl delta e of this aircraft right okay so this is the cl delta e of the entire aircraft so cl delta e now the total cl of the aircraft right lift coefficient of the aircraft is due to cl not lift independent like uh, lift coefficient at zero angle of attack and its variation with angle of attack cl alpha into alpha and then cl delta e into times delta e so this particular cl delta e is what we have derived here which is eta times st upon s times cl alpha of tail times tail effectiveness parameter tau okay fine so initially it was just cl not plus cl alpha into alpha when there is no delta e but there is change this delta cl here delta cl is due to cl delta e times delta e here where cl delta e is nothing but e dot st upon s tau times cl alpha of tau similarly there is a pitching moment right when there is change in the lift at the tail there is a change in pitching moment the change in pitching moment apart from cm of wing and tail combination so when it is in trim we know cm is zero right so apart from that so the, during that case the contribution is only from cm not and cm alpha when there is a delta e deflection there is a change in cm load, uh, total uh, pitching moment which is due to the lift produced at the tail right so the change in the pitching moment delta m is due to the lift produced at the tail right which is which contributes towards negative moment let us assume if there is a positive lift there is a negative moment so let us assume l of t is positive by uh, by convention so this produces a negative moment and the negative moment is because of lifted tail or change in the lift at the tail right times the distance between cg and the aerodynamic center of the tail which is x cg or x ac of tail minus x cg right that's a moment arm we know it so or change in change in the lift of the aircraft which is acting at the tail part the change is near the tail right so or aerodynamic center of the tail multiplied by x ac of tail minus x cg right so this equals to minus lift at the tail times x ac of tail minus x cg delta m so this implies delta cm a change in the pitching moment of the total aircraft because of the elevator deflection is due to the change in the lift at the tail because of the elevator deflection which is equals to eta st upon s times so this particular parameter is called l of t length of tail upon c bar times change in the lift coefficient at the tail okay so we know that change in the lift coefficient at the tail this change in the pitching moment coefficient is equals to minus eta vh right vh is the tail volume ratio this particular product is the tail volume ratio area of the tail times length of tail upon area of the wing times mean aerodynamic order of wing so this particular product is a tail volume ratio vh and delta cl at the tail is due to change in lift coefficient at the tail right this is delta cl at the tail this particular parameter so you can simply substitute it there right so this is nothing but cl alpha of tail times eta okay so times delta e of course eta times delta e. so the total pitching moment or change in pitching moment coefficient of the aircraft due to delta e deflection is equals to minus eta vh cl alpha 
tail times tail effectiveness parameter. Okay. So, so the C m delta e is equals to C m delta e is equals to minus eta p h C l alpha tail times tail effectiveness parameter. So, this is one equation and this is a other equation that talks about C l delta e and C m delta e. Okay. Uh, similar to this, uh, the total pitching moment of the aircraft is now can be expressed as C m naught plus C m alpha into alpha and C m delta e times delta e. So, when you just have wing and tail combination, right, what you have is C m naught plus C m alpha into alpha when there is no elevated deflection, but when there is an elevated deflection, we have additional terms C m delta e that elevator control power comes into the picture times delta e. Okay. And what is C m delta e? C m delta e is equals to, so we earlier we discussed C m delta e has to be negative, is not it? Whether it is true or not, eta is positive, we know tail volume ratio is positive, C l alpha of tail is positive and tau we witnessed it is positive. So, this entire positive term multiplied by minus what we have is C m delta e is negative. Okay. Now, you have C m naught, C m alpha, C m delta e. And similarly, for trim conditions, before talking about trim, we have C L naught plus C L alpha into alpha and C L delta E into delta E in the linear regime, right. This is what we have modeled, right. So, we have come up with this aerodynamic model for the linear regime, which is a function of alpha as well as delta E for both the equations. Now, we are talking about how to change angle of attack from one trim condition to the other trim condition or let us say if I want to trim the angle of it, uh, trim aircraft at certain angle of attack, what should be the corresponding elevator angle, uh, elevator deflection that I require or trim de, uh, or the elevator deflection to trim the aircraft at that particular alpha trim. Okay. That means, we witnessed for trim C m is 0. So, if you substitute that there, what I have is C m naught plus C m alpha times alpha trim plus C m delta E times delta E trim. Okay. Similarly, C l is equals to C l, this C l becomes C l trim. Okay. C l trim is equals to, how can we estimate C l trim? From the level flight equation, L is equals to W from L is equals to W, when you want to fly at a particular velocity, then you will be able to find out what is the corresponding C L trim. If you know that C L trim, you will be able to find out what will be the resulting alpha trim and delta E trim to fly at that particular velocity, right. That can, with, uh, that satisfies the level flight condition, okay. So, this is equals to C L naught plus C L alpha times alpha trim plus C M delta E times delta E trim, okay. Say this is my equation 1 and this is my equation 2. Okay. So, I have two equations. See, C m is 0 here and we know C l trim. So, how can we find C l trim? So, from lift is equals to weight. Okay. So, C l trim is equals to twice the wing loading upon rho times V infinity square or V trim square velocity for that particular trim condition, V trim square. So, given the data about this and the flight velocity that you want to fly, you can find out what is the corresponding trim C L lift coefficient that you require. So, for this lift coefficient, what should be the alpha trim and delta E trim. So, you have two equations that mean left side is known here, right. And you have uh, two unknowns here in these two equations, you can simply solve it, is not it? You can solve for what is alpha trim and delta E trim. Can you do that? So, say 1 multiplied by, so if I want to find out delta E trim in the first place, 1 multiplied by C L alpha minus 2 equation 2 multiplied by C M alpha, right. So, this implies C L 
delta E trim. So, what I am doing? I am multiplying this equation 1 with C L alpha, right? And then equation 2 with C M alpha and subtracting 2 from 1, okay? So, that this alpha trim terms can get cancelled out. I have this equation with one variable and I can rearrange the term so that I can get to know what is delta E trim. So, this delta E trim is equals to C m delta E times C l alpha or say C l alpha times C l delta E C m C m delta E minus uh, C m alpha times C m C m alpha times C m delta E. This is a mistake. This is C L delta E. Okay. So please correct this equation. So this this is C L delta E. So that's the reason why. Um, so this is C M alpha times C L delta E. This equals to so minus of C L trim times C M alpha. C L trim times C M alpha minus of minus C L naught times C m alpha, C l naught times C m alpha, okay. okay. So, delta E trim is equals to trim is equals to minus of C L trim C M alpha plus C M naught C L alpha minus C L naught C M alpha upon this like you can say C M delta E right. So, C M this is like C M alpha C M delta E C L alpha, C L delta E. So, you can take the discriminant of it. So, in that case, this minus will not be there, okay? Fine. So, similarly, what is this C M alpha, C L delta E minus C L alpha, C M delta E. Okay. Similarly, alpha trim, you know, to, to find out alpha trim equation 1 multiplied by uh, C L delta E minus equation 2 multiplied by C m delta e. So, if I do that, what I have is, so alpha, alpha trim, alpha trim is C m alpha times C l delta e minus C m del, C, C l alpha times C m delta e is equals to minus C l naught times C m alpha C l C m delta E minus minus C m naught times C l delta E right plus C l naught times C m delta E ok. this equals to alpha trim is equals to minus of C L trim. Oh, this is sorry, I am sorry, this is C L trim not C L, C L not, this is C L trim right, C L trim multiplied by C M delta E here. So, C L trim multiplied by C L delta, C, C M delta E. So, plus C M naught C L delta E minus C L naught C C M delta upon you can find the determinant C M alpha C M delta E C L alpha C L delta E. Okay. Fine. So, with these two equations you can find out what is delta E trim and alpha trim. So, we now got delta E trim or say 
what should be the alpha trim and delta E trim if you want to fly at this particular CL trim condition, right? which corresponds to the velocity V infinity for a given UAV. Right? So, when you want to change from one velocity to the other velocity, you need to change the CL trim. The CL trim changes, which can be achieved by elevator control. Right? How the CL can be changed? By changing the alpha, uh, alpha trim, which is achieved from elevator trim. So, let us look at what we have done till now. So, this particular equation the C m equation which is C m naught plus C m alpha into alpha plus C m delta e times delta e right. So, what should be the control surface deflection to trill, trim this particular aircraft? Delta E trim. So, in this, the C M naught again, see we have wing and we have a tail combination and in the tail we have an elevator right now. Okay. So, for the, so this C M naught will still remain the same like uh, C M naught is equals to C M AC of wing plus C L naught of wing times X bar C G minus X bar AC of wing minus eta S T upon S or you can say V H tail volume ratio V H times C L alpha of tail times I of T minus epsilon naught. Okay. So, this still remains the same and the C M alpha that we are using in this equation is C L alpha of wing times X C G minus X A C bar of wing minus eta V H tail volume ratio which is S T upon S times L T X bar A C of tail minus X bar C G upon right. Yeah, X bar C G that, that particular product is a tail volume ratio S T L T upon S C bar. Okay. So, tail volume ratio multiplied by C L alpha of tail multiplied by 1 minus 2 epsilon upon dou alpha change in the downward shooter angle of attack, change in angle of attack. Okay. So, these two C m naught, C m alpha still remain same and C m delta e we derived, right? We just derived before uh, solving for this alpha trim and delta e trim, which is minus eta tail volume ratio times C l alpha of tail times eta. Okay. So, C m delta e is negative for a statically stable aircraft C m naught is positive and C m alpha is negative, right? So, now for trim condition, for trim condition, so we will now see what will be the change in the trim angle of attack with the change in the trim lift coefficient. So, when I have to fly at different velocities, I need to change my trim lift coefficient, right? That is what we discussed. So, what will be the change in the trim elevator deflection or what should be the change in elevator, change in elevator deflection when there is a change in trim lift coefficient? Okay. Let us derive that. So, for trim, there is a reason for, to derive it, we will soon discuss about that. So, for trim, C m has to be 0. So, substituting 0 in this equation, delta E trim is equals to minus C m naught minus or say minus C m alpha times alpha trim upon C m delta E upon C m. So, enter C m delta E. Am I correct? So, just substituting C m is equals to 0 in this equation and trying to find out what is delta E trim. So, delta E trim is equals to minus of C m naught upon C m delta e okay. minus of this C m alpha upon C l alpha of the entire aircraft times C l alpha times alpha trim upon C m delta e. Okay. So, delta e trim is equals to minus C m naught upon C m delta e times d C m upon d C l. Right? 
So, CM, CL, CM alpha upon CL alpha is DCM upon DCL, right? So, multiply it by, let us assume the total trim angle of attack is dominated by CL alpha times alpha trim, okay? So, let us have such a, that assumption, then what we have is, this is nothing but CL trim upon CM delta I, okay? So, what is DCM by upon DCL? This is nothing but negative of static margin, right? Do you remember this? So, delta E trim is equals to minus C m naught upon C m delta E plus x bar N p minus x bar C g upon C m delta E times C l trim. Since here assume CL of total aircraft is dominated by CL alpha of the aircraft times alpha trim, okay. Assume CL naught is very small, okay. Since DCM upon DCL is equals to minus of static margin, okay, which is minus of X bar NP minus X bar CG of the aircraft. So, just refer our previous lectures, you will be able to figure out this. And now, the slope. So, can I express this delta E trim like this uh, in this form? So, delta E naught plus change in delta E due to change in CL trim condition. Okay. Change in CL trim. When there is change in CL trim, there is a change in delta E trim. Okay. Times delta, times CL trim. Okay, is equals to minus of CM naught upon CM delta E plus X bar NP minus X bar CG upon CM delta E times CL trim. Okay, so by comparing the constant as, uh, constant and coefficients of CL trim, what I have is delta E naught is equals to delta E naught is equals to minus C m naught upon C m delta E, okay, and D delta E upon D C L for trim, right, is equals to change in delta E for change in C L trim, okay, is equals to minus of X bar N P minus x bar C g, I am sorry, x bar N p minus x bar C g upon my C m delta i, okay. So, there is lot to learn from this equations. So, the elevated deflection delta E naught mainly governs when like is required when your C G has to is at the neutral point. Am I correct or not? If your C G is at the neutral point, so that means you do not have this trim coefficient anymore here. So, you need to satisfy this delta E naught for this C M naught and C M delta E. So, we know C M naught is positive for a statically stable aircraft and C M delta E is negative. So, this particular delta E naught becomes positive, right? So, this is how the variation of C m with delta E variation of C l and delta E, right? So, delta E is positive here and delta E is negative and this is 0, okay. So, what is delta E positive? We just discussed about it. Deflecting elevated downwards, right, is delta E positive, which gives a negative moment that decreases angle of attack, that decreases your CL. It has to be, isn't it? That is why if you see 
this particular equation dou delta E upon dou CL trim. So when there is for a positively uh, or for an aircraft or a UAV with a positive static stability or static margin, you have XNP minus XCG is positive, right? So CM delta E is negative. So this particular slope is negative. So when there is a positive or downward deflection in elevator deflection, so the trim that results, the, the CL trim that's going to result is negative or decreased or the when there is a positive increase in delta E, there is an increase in CL trim or say when you have to decrease your CL trim, you have to increase that delta E or deflect your elevator downwards, okay. So that means the slope is negative for this plot. If I have to plot delta E versus CL here, right, CL trim, if I have to plot delta E versus CL trim, this particular equation. This is nothing but is equals to delta E, right? This is delta E trim, right? So delta E naught plus slope times CL trim, isn't it? Slope is negative here and delta E is positive. So that means delta E naught is positive. Let us say this is my delta E naught, right? So this is positive and for a given CG location, for the same UAV, for a given CG location, that means that you, you have placed the weights and distributed the weight, all other uh, components in such a way that you achieve at this particular, the CG will result in this XCG, right? For that particular CG location, so this XNP minus XCG upon CM delta E is negative, right? For that CG location, the slope is negative here, for example. So delta E naught corresponds to what? If XCG is at XNP, XCG is equals to XNP, neutrally stable condition, okay? And now when there is when the CG is ahead of the neutral point, right? What does it mean? If XCG minus XNP minus XCG is positive, what does it mean? For example, if this is my aircraft, okay. Let us say this is my aircraft. So wing alone aircraft, say this is my reference line. So say this is my NP, right, neutral point. Now if it has to be positive, that means this distance XNP, this is XNP should be greater than this CG, distance CG, they say this is my CG distance. So this should be greater than, uh, the, otherwise the CG should lie ahead of the XNP, right, close to the leading edge here, let us say. Now, so for this particular uh, location of CG, I have this slope constant, isn't it? The slope is constant. Okay. Let us say this particular line represents X CG1 position, okay, X CG1. Now consider a second location. So what can I do for that is, this corresponds to X CG. X, X, N, P, okay. So say this is my reference line. So this is my N, P, N, P, neutral point, okay. Now this is my X, C, G, 1, location 1, okay. So say I have an aircraft or a wing alone aircraft, something like this, okay. This is my XCG1. Now, let us say I take my CG a bit more uh, or, uh, or forward to, uh, or towards the leading edge here, right, towards the nose of this aircraft. Okay. So this is, let us say this is my XCG2, okay. So that means the distance between this neutral point and CG location is increased which makes this slope more steeper, isn't it? That is more negative here, am I going to talk now? So this makes the slope more negative. And see, delta E naught is independent of this location of center of gravity, isn't it? That is what we, we figured it out here, okay. And then let us assume the third case where this is like XCG, 
Okay. Now let us assume another case where the CG is moved further up, further towards the nose. This is X CG three location. So that means it's more steeper now compared to the previous case. So what I have is this particular slope. Let us say this corresponds to X CG three. So how far I can move this? Question is, how far I can move this? Let us consider there is another location X CG four. Okay. So let that be. X C G four. Okay. So what do you mean by this? I am changing C L trim here, isn't it? The C L trim, or what is the C L trim? I am changing the C L value, right? Isn't it? So at each and every, when there is a change in elevator deflection, that means for each and every C L there is a particular delta E value, which means there is a particular alpha trim. Am I correct or not? So if I If for the same CG, if I take some other CL value, so there is a particular delta E negative here in the, in this case, in this particular case. If I have to achieve this particular CL value, then I have to give delta E positive here. Okay. So this is what this curve talks about, isn't it? Am I correct? Or? And if you might have noticed that at CL trim, or say if this is your desired CL, let us say this is called design CL, where you there is no need of delta E trim. Right, delta E should be zero. You should be able to achieve this CL trim, CL design, right? CL design without any control surface deflection, right? So that CL design, yeah, corresponds to a particular CG location. So corresponds to a particular curve here. Am I correct? So, yeah. Coming back to this, now let us say there is CL maximum. There, for in, in, any aircraft, or we know uh, we have CL maximum for the wing, right? So how can I achieve CL maximum? It is again at a particular angle of attack. Am I correct or not? Am I correct? So how can I achieve that angle of attack by deflecting the control surface, right? So that means a negative deflection will give you give me positive angle of attack. What is negative deflection? So deflecting elevator upwards. Will produce a downward force that creates a positive moment, which increases the angle of attack. Right. So if I have CL max is at higher higher angle of attacks, uh, or say angles of attack, higher positive angles of attack. So that I so I it is clear that I need a negative deflection here. Right. So there is a maximum negative deflection for the elevator, isn't it or not? So let us say if this is my symmetric airfoil, I may not be able to deflect it 90 degrees down. So apart from the mechanical constraints, I am talking about aerodynamic constraints. The flow may separate altogether. Right. So there is certain value of this control surface deflection where the flow is still effective on the control surface. Right. So that particular value is known as delta E max. So let us say this is my delta E maximum. Right. Negative delta E max or maximum upward deflection of the elevator. So this, with this delta E max, I'll be able to achieve CL max. Let us assume that. Okay. So this delta E deflection up and downward, right? Otherwise, upward maximum deflection will achieve alpha maximum or alpha stall. Okay. For which, with which I can achieve this CL maximum. Okay. Now the CG location, as the CG location varies, the slope is changing here, right? So now if I So, if I look at this particular curve, right, CG4, I may not be able to achieve with maximum delta E deflection. I may not be able to achieve this CL maximum because CL maximum is somewhere here. Am I correct or not? I am not able to trim my aircraft at CL maximum. I I have to satisfy myself with this particular like with the limited regime of CL. I may not be able to use the entire CL versus alpha that that my wing possess. Do you understand? So if you take it more forward, right? So this this is a con con constraint that you face. You can't be able to use the CL total CL available. So now say 
if I take this CG a bit backward, right? From here, I shifted my CG here. So that means I'm able to increase, yeah, still, still I'm not able to achieve the CL maximum. Right. I, I am able to, right, yeah, increase the available CL regime, but I'm still not able to achieve the CL maximum. Now say I have taken my CG further backward. So with with this, I'm able to do this, right? Do you get this point or not? So I don't need this delta E maximum here. For example, with this delta E maximum, I can achieve something else here, more than CL max. I don't even require delta E maximum if my CG is within this limit, right? So for this particular curve, yellow, uh, orange curve, or CG1 location, I just need some negative delta E to achieve that CL maximum. Some upward deflection, that's it. Okay. So now the constraint on the forward CG location, the most forward CG location is from this delta E maximum condition. Right? So the elevator control surface with which, or the elevator control deflection with which you still be able to trim your aircraft at CL maximum. So the CG location for which, with the maximum elevated deflection, upward elevated deflection, you can still be able to trim your aircraft at CL maximum, right? So that is the most forward CG location. So by substituting that in this particular equation, right? So what is this XNP minus XCG most forward? This becomes CL trim becomes CL maximum, right? So delta E becomes delta E maximum. Okay? By substituting those parameters in this equation, we'll be able to find out what is the most forward CG location. Okay. How can I do that? So I have delta E max. Delta E max here is maximum upward deflection, right? Negative deflection is equals to delta E naught, right? Plus X bar NP minus X bar CG F. CGF talks about most forward CG location, okay? CGF upon CM delta E times CL max. Now you are trimming your aircraft at maximum CL, okay? So by rearranging this equation, so what I have is X CG, most forward CG location is equals to X bar NP minus delta E max, delta E naught multiplied by CM delta E upon CL maximum. So you can't simply place your CG far ahead. No? If you want to still want a control, good control of your aircraft, you have to limit your CG forward location, right? So what we have is a permissible. Now with this details, what I can say is, so so if I have an aircraft, something like this, okay. Say if this is my reference line, say if say this point as my neutral point okay. and this is my XCG most forward which is governed by this delta E maximum, right? So this particular distance is the allowable CG traverse. You have to design your UAV to lie within this particular distance, right? The CG of the UAV should be within this limit. XC X. So the most aft location is X and P. So, so we are not talking about stick fixed and uh, stick free condition because in a UAV there is no point of stick free. It is always controlled by a servo motor, right, or an actuator. So this CG. So this is nothing but the most aft location of a. See, so this is X and P corresponding location is. Most aft location is the neutral point for static stability. And most forward location is XCGF, which is governed by this delta E max. Okay. So we have now covered good enough concepts in order to talk about performance analysis, right? We'll consider a UAV, data of a UAV, 
and then we'll do performance analysis for various. So, for example, if I have to trim that aircraft at different angles of attack, right, within the linear regime, let us say, for different angle, for at different angles of attack, what should be the corresponding delta E trim, right? For from a, for a alpha trim, what should be delta E trim, and then say what should be the velocity of the flight resulting from that, and then what should be the thrust required, power required and also CL by CD and CL power 3 by 2 by CD for that particular configuration, how they vary with velocity or say angle of attack. That is what we will solve using an iterative approach. So, I wish you should uh, like one of uh, our TA Kazi uh, made a tutorial on MATLAB. So, you can start using, the, uh, you start getting comfortable with the MATLAB environment. So, we will be solving the problem using MATLAB, fine, the iterative problem using MATLAB. Thank you.